Well, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, it's how you play the game. I'm just heading over right now to the WFN stage, and uh, we're going to have a good old-fashioned cook-off. Coming up, whitefish are great eating and a lot of fun on light tackle. Best of all, they can be easy to catch through the ice. On the first half of today's show, we head to Ontario's sunset country in search of late winter whitefish. Bob shows us how to catch the fish, and his brother Wayne provides the comic relief. Go for it. <laughs> Then, we're off to the Spring Fishing Show in Toronto for an old-fashioned cook-off. Bob brings in his ringer, Matt Maurice, and they square off against Susan Kane Doyle from Ontario Out of Doors magazine. Susan bribes the judges with treats, but Bob's loyal fans are there to cheer him on. <laughs> Stick around for a surprise finish to an exciting contest of culinary expertise. Here comes, whoa! Oh, where are you? Oh, man! Oh, yeah. you got to love it. Pretty young. All right. Oh, man! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, dude. Oh, man. Way to slide that one. Oh, there you got it. Yeah. There you go. All right. That is a monster. <laughs> the Real Fishing Show with Bob Izumi. Nice one. Whoa. Woo-hoo-wee. <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> Oh, Ooh, look at this baby. Biggest pike ever? <laughs> All right. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. A good one. Whoa. Here he comes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> this is what? Don't be fishing. This is all about right there. 16 pounds. Now, look at this. Real fishing is sponsored by Chevrolet. Mercury, number one on the water, and Tim Hortons. Hey, folks, that's what I call real fishing. I had a chance to do some ice fishing in Ontario Sunset Country. We headed out late in the season during the last few weeks of ice to see if we could locate some whitefish. We have found the whitefish. There you can see it coming up on the Lorentz. Come on, baby. Come on up here. Mr. Whitefish. I'm pretty sure it is anyway. Lowered down there. Been in about 60 feet of water. And I lowered down... Uh, about 40 feet, and I let it sit there, twitched it a few times, and whammo, and I missed it a couple of times. Now, what I spooled up here is some pretty light line. I got, oh, yeah, there we go. Look at that. All right. Very excellent. Whoa. All right. You're talking about a smoker type of fish? Oh, yeah, you're what thinking you of the Bradley, are you? Yeah, that's right. Well, you uh, know what? what is this going to be, apple wood or cherry wood? We're talking oh, yeah. maple. We're talking some fresh whiteies and a uh, oh, little easy. jigging spoon here. Look at that. All right, well, there you go. That's not hard. Go for it. <laughs> All right. Just hooked up with another one here. And uh, that one was down about... 50 feet down over 60 feet of water. Feels like another white fish. Let's see here. Coming up. Coming up. Coming up. Caught on the edge of the ice. Was he on the bottom? Oh, this one, yeah. But look where this one's hooked. It's hooked in the... Uh, Opposite end. <laughs> Wait, oh, it came off. I see what happened. It got off. No, no, it got off, but I got it up through the hole, and then the hook came out. This line's real sensitive. It's a three-pound test fire line crystal, and uh, wow. Anyway, that one, that one, I caught it coming up through the hole, and then the jig popped out of his mouth. I'll tell you a story. I was over there in about the same depth of water. And I'm using the uh, these little chartreuse uh, gulp niblets on my on my little spoon here. And I'll, I said, why don't I try throwing some down the hole? So I'm throwing these little things down the hole like this because they're biodegradable. And up 20 feet, one comes up and grabs grabs them. I'm watching this fine little tiny line go down. And you're not catching them. Well, I was underneath them. I was like on the bottom in 50 feet of water. Okay, well, you see how my line's gone limp here. I'm going to bring that up now, probably 
There's about five. And another, maybe about right up into there. Now I'm going to just work it in that neighborhood. Well, that's where most of the bait is, about, what, 10 to 15 feet off the, the bottom? Yeah. Okay. So there you can see my jig on the graph just sitting there. So 40, yeah, 45. More great fishing when we return. They're getting bigger, boys and girls. Close captioning is brought to you by FNCC and BoaterExam.com. Dragging. Eagle is dragging something. He's got everybody spread out at all different depths, and there's a shoal nearby. And uh, you know, we're just fishing various depths and, and working different areas of that bottom third of the water column for these whitefish. And uh, you know, it's real key to to keep an eye on your electronics and just see if a fish moves in under your uh, under your hole here. And that last fish I caught, I was working. Uh, the jigging spoon probably about oh, eight feet or so off the bottom and I was jigging it like this up and down and most of the fish are hitting just when it's sitting still so after you jig it a bit like this let it sink down and then as it becomes tight just let it sit for a few seconds and they're hitting really light but with this no stretch fire line I can feel it so they're just hitting it just a tick and you just load up and set the hook on it Okay, it's so funny. I get, I was just working this just off the bottom down there, and all of a sudden I see a line come up about three to five feet off the bottom and just nail it, and all of a sudden bang. And you know that's the one thing about it is this this three pound uh, crystal fire line is awesome because there's got no, the magic touch, folks. You know I could feel it, just nail it. Okay, here we go. I've got the special HD. Uh, if you pull that transducer up. Neoprene gloves. Good idea. See if we can get his head turned around here. Got to get his head coming through the hole because that ice is so thick. Well, this is a good exercise, Bob. That was about 200 yards that run through that. Yeah, look at that. Ooh, Ooh that darn. Oh, nice Careful. one. Nice one. You can't get him? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wow, they're getting bigger, Bob. They're getting bigger. Look at that. They're getting bigger, boys and girls. They're getting bigger. Your bait has disappeared. Well, I saw them just come up and nail it. I got some pliers here. I guess because it took it so deep, we better keep this one. Wow. There we go. White fish through the ice are a fun fighting and very delicious fish. They live in deep cold lakes where they school in depths of 50 feet or more. They feed on crustaceans, insects, eggs, and small bait fish. Catching whitefish is usually pretty easy once you locate a school. Small spoons work great with a sensitive line so you can feel the light strikes. Whitefish have small soft mouths, so using a smaller hook will help ensure that you get them to the hole. If you're looking for something a little different to fish for through the ice, or just looking for a good tasting fish, then give whitefish a try. You'll be glad you did. Up next, that my age food is almost as important as other things in life. <laughs> Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View, sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. Man, you should have seen it. There were so many fish in there, you could hardly see the water. I'm telling you, they were side by side and one on top of each other. This is every angler's dream, finding a glory hole loaded with big, hungry fish. Thing is, if you spend enough time looking, that dream will eventually come true. Then, after catching a few, reality sets in and the whole thing shuts down. Why this happens is quite simple. They become used to your presence and routine. After witnessing others have trouble, they know something's up. Fish are in it to survive. No matter how many are down there, you'll never catch them all. Switching to something different may earn you an extra fish, but then again, it may not. Another good trick, borrowed from ice fishermen, is to present bait in a new spot a short distance away. That's why they drill so many holes in the same area. 
It gives fish a new perspective on things. Eventually, even that will fail to produce. The best thing to do now is take a break, leave, and give them a one-hour rest. After that, you'll find it's a whole new ball game. Bottom line is, fish have a great memory. It's just a little short. Okay, we're at Ontario Spring Fishing Show, and I've got my sous chef. Well, actually, he's my coach, Matt Maurice. Matt, thanks for joining me. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. Well, Matt is from the Martini House here in Burlington, Ontario, and uh, well, here I should say about half hour from yeah, here, yeah, yeah. and we're just getting set up here. It's going to be a cook off. I'm going against Susan Kane from Ontario The Doors Magazine. We're having an old fashioned cook off. We gotta we gotta prepare this food and get ready. What do you think? I think we're gonna win. Hey, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Glad you could join us. Okay, let's get this show on the road, boys and girls. <laughs> at the WFN main stage. As promised, we have the cook-off with Bobby Zumi and Sue Kane. I am so pumped. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. How's it going, Bob? Well, you know, I can't complain, Rico. Anytime around food, I get excited. At my age, food's almost as important as other things in life. Oh, at your age, what do you mean? When I was in diapers, food was definitely important for you. Please. Rico, I knew you when you were this big. It's funny to be standing on stage. I know you've been uh, doing the MC in here at the WFN booth. And I can't wait to kick some old-fashioned butt here on the cook-off with we'll Susan. We'll see, we'll see. I don't know, I have a lot of confidence in Sue, too, so. I don't have an old-fashioned butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Stand up for yourself, girl. Um, Sue, I hear you have something to give, Bob. I do. Bob, we have a special jacket for you. All right. I, wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, wait. I, I see something on the back. Who Bob? Is Bob? I feel the same way, Sue. Who is he, really? Come on. Okay. The front is very nice. Okay, well, I'll put it on just because I'm a good sport. See, I, I just said old fashioned yeah, butt. I didn't say it was her. Yeah, it's your old-fashioned butt. Exactly. <laughs> You're going to kick your own old-fashioned butt. Okay, so um, you guys are all set? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, you know, this was a, you know, no-holds-barred type competition. It was? And, well, I thought it was. Nobody told me there were any rules. So I was up Thursday night practicing until 2 in the morning with my fishing buddy, uh, uh, Matt Maurice. Matt, give everybody a wave over there. Woo! All right. Matt, Matt's a great angler, but... His real job is, uh, he's a head chef at the Martini House in Burlington, one of my favorite little haunts. I have Steve D'Elia, the back page in the magazine. Thank you for me. Hey, wait. The back page of the magazine would be the good old-fashioned butt of the magazine, right? <laughs> I like the theme we have going on. Good old-fashioned butt. That's awesome. Do the judges uh, accept... Uh, a little bribe because I, I know these people and I know how this industry works. You know, you slide them a little cash, maybe uh money. Yeah. Oh, we have much better stuff planned. Yeah. What do you guys got planned? What's what's going on over there? Well, There's some weird looking stuff on that table. Steve is gonna start. Steve, you wanna kiss up to the judges a bit? Yeah. We're, we're talking about a little bit of old fashioned butt kissing. So um it's <laughs> a general audience here. So this is in lieu of uh, what we can do later. We'd like you to sit on these. <laughs> and uh, Bill, this is your sign you take two. <laughs> Boy, it's too bad. When you guys get older, maybe you can afford an electric one. <laughs> you can't put an electric one on your boat, Bob. <laughs> okay, so my recipe starts with a bottle of wine. I was told I couldn't bring any of the Baba Zumi Coyotes run wine because it was illegal in this room. There wasn't a license for it. That's right. And now you're already using booze. I'm, I'm cooking with it. I'm not letting them drink it. Oh, boy, you're getting them drunk. She put a whole bottle in there. That's not fair. <laughs> I just wanted to know that uh, anything you people say will be used against you on my TV show that we're filming as well once you get... Well, we're not quite done yet. Let's add some dark rum. Oh my. 
And then we're going with orange juice. It's safe. You sure? What do you put the tablespoon orange juice in? Oh no. To make that many samples, we need at least a bottle. He is adding two cups of cream, a third a cup of sugar, and some vanilla. There's already ice and rock salt on the outside of the ball. And we need the audience to shake it up. Oh, uh, the WFN fish is rubbing his belly. You guys got everybody working here, don't you? You know, you got the crowd working, got the judges getting hammered. I brought another apron with me from home. Uh, it's a deal I have when I'm, uh, I come on the road almost 300 days a year. So I got this little apron I wear at home sometimes. Does it work for you? Uh, every now and then I get to use a voucher, yeah. Yep. Uh, it's a pretty good deal I got. We'll be right back after this. Each judge's vote is going to count for two points each. This tip of the week is sponsored by Coleman. Hey, for as long as I can remember, I've loved fishing. But you know, the one thing I can't stand is being bothered by mosquitoes and other bugs. That's why over the years I've made sure I've been protected with... Deep woods off. Deep woods. Deep woods off. Deep woods. Okay, maybe I've lost a little bit on top and gained a lot in front, but one thing that hasn't changed is who I trust to keep me protected, and that's off deep woods. No matter what you do in the outdoors, there are a few ways you can keep those mosquitoes away. Mosquitoes are attracted to dark colors, so it's best to wear light colored clothing. Combine that with a long lasting insect repellent, and you've got the best combination to enjoy your outdoor experience. Off Deep Woods gives me the protection I need for up to six hours. 25% DEET is the key ingredient in defending me against mosquitoes that may carry West Nile virus. It's now been over 50 years since Off has been letting guys like me enjoy being outdoors without being bothered by mosquitoes and other bugs. And that's why I've trusted it for as long as I can remember. And I'm going to continue trusting it for a long time to come. We came up with this recipe here, Yin Yang Pickerel or walleye for you guys that want to say the proper term. Uh, term. And uh, Matt, let's talk a little bit about what's in this recipe for the yin yang uh, pickerel. Oh, it's very simple. It's uh, white and black sesame seeds. And then we're going to coat them. We should probably just fire one off right now. So well, yeah, let, me get, let me get a little canola oil. We're going to use okay. probably about, what, three tablespoons of canola oil, maybe yeah, a little more here. Yeah, that's good. Just enough to cover the bottom and we'll be fine. Just this, this fry pan is uh, just to pick this up the other day. It's a rather large one here I got for my appetite is perfect. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> the judges are getting drunk and hungry. That's all we need. Ornery judges. <laughs> okay, we'll get this oil heat up. I'll be done in about two seconds. So it's easy to do. The people at home, they want to make it look funky. We think you must admit that Susan and Steve are doing a great job entertaining the crowd, samples, customer service. And I think it'd be easier for everybody to see you if you stand up. Oh. <laughs> Bob, your wife right now has your competitor's dessert, and I think she's about to run away with it. Bob, I can't believe you set that up. Oh, wow, look at this. This young lady just gave me a picture of her with her fish. This was a very large pike. Did it feed the whole family? Yeah? All right, well, thank you. It was that big. Wow. I just want to say that our competition is your fish is excellent. It's very good. Each judge's vote is going to count for two points each. And then we're going to get you guys to vote. And your vote counts a total of four points. And compliments to Matt, you did a bang up job with presentations. And sorry about your luck getting stuck with Bob. But, uh, Come down at the end, he's going to be close, but i got to go with Sue. Uh, the current Steve put together a great presentation, but entertained both the judges and the audience. My vote goes to Sue. 
Okay, so we have one vote for Sue, which equals two points. Now we're on to Cam. Cam, what's your vote? This is really tough because it's yeah. both very, very good. I really admire uh, Steve and Sue's generosity and the energy that they uh, operated with and the amount of little treats that came with theirs. I have to say I was concerned in observing Bob's cooking. Well, I think it's an it exaggeration to say that Bob cooked anything. I wasn't aware that he even touched this food. And I'm not sure that should be allowed. And then I started to think about his show and the number of times when I've seen him very successful catching fish, but there's always a captain or a guide or somebody else oh, helping oh, oh, along. This is so, from a new sponsor. I guess I, that's wait. allowed. And okay. that being the case, I'm going to have to give the, um, the vote to Matt and his sous chef Bob. Okay, so it's a tie, isn't it? Okay, right? it's a tie. Walter, what's your say? Well, you know, the presentation was very nice here, Bob. But, you know, I got to go with Sue. I give her a job down at Pier 4 tomorrow. Okay. okay, great. So we have Sue. All right. Last, we have Shirley. Shirley, what's your vote? Well, I think for quality, they were both equal. Quantity, Sue won hands down. And since I'm such a big eater, I'll have to go with quantity. So I'll vote for Sue. Okay, so so far we have three votes for Sue and one vote for for Bob. So that that means it's six two, right? But now we need the audience's vote. Yes. I think that's three votes for Sue and one for Matt. I'm not sure if Bob was involved. Okay. Anyway, who okay. asked Bill? <laughs> so officially Bob, but we all understand it's clearly Matt's talent. I'm gonna yell out Bob's name and then you're gonna applaud. And then I'm gonna yell out Sue's name, same thing, and whoever gets the loudest applause wins, alright? So for everybody who's tried the samples, who is voting for Bob? Okay, it's a tough one. And for everybody who's tried the samples, who's voting for Sue? Oh. You know what that means? What? You guys are tied. Oh. 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 Love it. Love it. Um, and if you want to talk to Bob or if you want autographs from Bob, um, don't bug him here. I was told go over to Snow Bear. He'll be there for a while. Okay. They say it was a draw. I don't know, though. There seem to be some biased judges there. I'm not sure. Maybe they should have had all my sponsors be judges or something. It was a lot of fun here at the Ontario Spring Fishing Show, and I'll tell you, it's time to get to work. We'll see you next week right here for some more real fishing. It's got the magic touch, folks. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. All right. Go for it. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm full of that was good. I'm coming to my head. That is a fish of a lifetime. Whoa. <laughs> well, that is just amazing. Look at that thing. Oh yeah! Wow, that was too cool. Oh, 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 oh.